She'll make these. A blackberry, apple, and cherry. So we're finally, uh, after about an hour and a half, these cracklings are are uh, cooked to a nice brown. And what I'm going to do here, I got this pot over here, and uh, I'm just going to scoop lard cracklings and everything out and pour it through this sieve and the lard is going to go in that and going to keep the cracklings separate to put in this bowl behind me on the table here and then the girls will put those in jars and basically hot can them and so I'm going to turn over here and just dump them out right into here like that those are the cracklings that's what we're going to eat the lard over here is what's going to be used in making breads and stuff. So uh, when I say hot canning and, and what we're doing here, uh, th this lard is very hot. It's, I don't know how hot, but it is, it is hot. Hot enough that when these cracklings are put into jars that they seal themselves. The jars the girls have washed and cleaned these jars this morning before and they're, they're, they're ready waiting, waiting on us to put these cracklings into those jars. So the jars are already clean and put the cracklings in there. This being this hot, they, they can themselves. Yes, no, and, and, and you don't have to, you don't have to what they call hot water bath them or pressure cooker them. I mean, these are, they are already cooked and because it's so hot itself, self seals the jars and then this lard is going to be uh, left in this tub till late afternoon early evening and um, we only have plastic buckets to put that lard in if you got another bowl I think we need to change that and probably just go ahead and go to the house with it just be real careful and don't drop it it's hot So you didn't care for the crack ones? Do you eat them? Well, you know what? In the, in the first video, I said I did not eat them. But I tried them this last fall we butchered, and they are actually pretty good on toast. Yeah. The salt and pepper. I was really surprised. You didn't like them before that? No. I guess I forgot what, what they taste like. <laughs> Pieces in there? Uh, I guess I would order there. Like I, this? I mean, I don't know what, why it was like that. That was some stuff that accidentally got in there that didn't get ground up. I'll get rid of it. Got another piece. So, okay, just don't put those in there. Right. Stop going down there, Dad. So, I came in to check. You do know when you put the lids on, you turn the, the lids upside, the uh -huh. jars upside down. Yeah, and do you care what kind of lids we use? Well, I thought I had brought lids on. Yeah. They, Cheryl, Holly, those were already washed. Heather. Uh, oh. Holly. Fine. Sorry. Oh, they were yeah, they were washed this morning. I didn't see oh, lids. Corn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had lids on mine. Well, oh, I know, but she's saying, did you want the two piece lids or the one? No, just the one piece. piece. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Putting them up, upside down, the lard is heavier than the cracklings, and that goes to the bottom, and that's the reason yeah. for putting them upside down, and that's what actually seals the jar. I'm not sure how dry they need to be. Uh, yeah, they don't. They don't need much water. That's for sure. I, I should have told you all that we had washed them this morning and got them ready. Sorry. Okay, Heidi, come here. Gonna help us. So just take out any of those big pieces. Uh, yeah, I think I got most of them. I saw them go in there, and they were just accidentally didn't get through the grinder. It's the same thing. But. And so what you want to do, because the lard goes down as you're filling them, you want to sort of keep this mixed up so that you get lard in the jars with them and you know what i'm actually i'm not sure i got enough lard in this i'm going to run back out and get the dipper and uh bring a dipper of a little more lard in here, okay, here and put it on there the jar up to the top. that's good i think so i, I think it's the lard there 
just keep keep it keep the lard stirred in because see that's what seals the jar off is the is the lard. Yeah, I'd say that's fine. I mean, you can make them right full. Or how full do you want your jars now? You yeah, right about like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, Holly, Basically. you need you need to stir. It. Take before you. You're all stirred. What, what you need you need somebody stirring and you dipping, so you don't get just pure lard and and so that but that you get enough lard in each jar because the lard goes down and that's what seals it, right, Doreen? Well, it helps. Yeah. It helps yep. to seal it. Yep. There you go. I think Holly's here is good. I'm gonna put just. A, is that enough in there, Doreen? It's pretty. Uh, Whoops. <laughs> it's getting thick at the bottom. And the way we have Oh, I do? Okay. Well, how about, I guess I need to go out. Yeah. Come over here and stir. Can you come over here and stir? And then yeah, give me that jar. I will tell you that the old timers, they didn't put them in jars. They put them in, uh, in, uh, in stone crocks. Oh. And, and then after they would cool down, they would pour lard on top of them, and that's what sealed them. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Because of the way they're cooked in their own lard, they, they, they are self they, they, they keep themselves. Yeah, that's real good, Holly. Yep. Okay, I'm going to go on out and keep working on other stuff. So this is, once that fat, um, you know, cools and this, it'll solid, you know, it looks solid like that. That's what we're going to add to our cornbread. Good eating. I'd rather eat that than pork chop. Just a mixing spoon. Good, good morning. Good morning. Great, how are you? Good. <laughs> are we going to be on the TV show? Well, if you want to be, we make videos about uh, stuff called the Appalachian Channel. Oh, yeah? Oh, oh nice. Yeah, we've seen your videos. Okay. Yeah, we're filming today. They're, uh, they've done a hog butchering yesterday, and they're processing the meat today and all that. So we are uh, been documenting that. That'll be on a video. Fun. Where y'all from? We're from Lansing. Yeah. Lansing? We're just outside of Wartburg. Oh, Florida. not far then. We're from Okeechobee, Florida. Oh, you're from Florida? Yes. Well, are you up visiting? Yes, my, my children. Yeah. And my we grandchildren. Today. Yes, and we're happy to be here. Well, they got a lot of nice products in here to yes, take home. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah, it's not very busy in the store today yet. I've only had, I think, one customer, or two customers. I had two customers so far, so it's not a very busy day but during the week, weekends we're busier type of thing but yeah it's not really tourist season right now people's not no, traveling so no, but the summertime it'll pick up in the summer and in, and in the fall like in the fall it's very busy in here like it can be you know like <laughs> the store will be full of people type of thing when i was here last time Doreen, i don't think i saw these bonnets what's what's okay, the story about yes, these we got those bonnets uh, like there's an Amish lady that we know in Kentucky and she makes these for us she makes the hats so we just got these hats and like they're generally for the men and then these bonnets for the ladies so that this these are genuine Amish bonnets so this one would be like for a child probably a small child uh, maybe a baby even I'm not sure how old because it's not very large and then this one, yeah, this would be for a child. And then there's bigger ones for adults. So now, who's buying these? Are, are Amish people buying these or just tourists buying them to have them? Uh, tourists are buying them. So, yeah, generally, the Amish are going to make their own? Yes, yeah, they would make their own. Yeah. And this is just something yeah, for... Yeah, this is... Uh, so, yeah, we like to have them because people uh, will... Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I think it was, didn't have any when I was here last time. I think it was yeah, sold out. I think out. They, we were sold out at that So they had to make these hats too? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yep. 
So how much is a hat like that sell for? Okay, these are $21.95. $21.95. Well, that's yeah, not bad. They are very nice to keep the sun off your ears type of thing. So that's, uh, yeah. Like, I've, I've sold a couple of these recently, so they are popular. What's the, what do you sell the best here in the store? What's your best selling? The baked goods or? You know, right now the baked goods are the the big thing right now. We do sell a lot of baked goods. Um, people like kitchen items, you know, like different kinds of uh, kitchen knickknacks or gadgets, you might say. We I did, we do good with those and uh, trying to think what else. Uh, and of course, sorghum always does well in the honey. We have honey and that does well too. So, yeah, just... Uh, just a variety of things. It's amazing what people, and, and we have some used items, and so sometimes somebody will find something uh, unique that they like that you know they might not find elsewhere. I mean, there's things outside, like the men find things out outside, like old things that <laughs> old tools, and old tools, and just stuff like that. Is is it's interesting, and uh, yeah, I do sell. Purses. I have uh, used purses too, which are sometimes popular. Uh, if we can find nice ones, they, they like those too. The women like those. But yeah, it's, we just sell a variety of things. So Looks like you've sold out a fr fried pies or she yeah, not brought any today? She hadn't had got any here today. I, I, maybe I need to let her know. I, I don't work here every day, so I'm not sure. Like I just work uh, a few days a month, so I'm not here all the time. But yeah, we'll let her know. She That's your daughter that makes those, right? No, the, uh, this would be my sister-in-law. That your sister-in-law makes. My makes sister it. makes the. Yeah. Okay. My daughter makes other things. She okay. makes the stack cake and the and the cookies. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if yeah, I need to let her know. Well, I'm gonna go back and see what everybody's doing. Okay. Good great. talking to you. Good talking to you too. We'll so go. this this is the pure lard here from where we. Earlier this morning, we were cutting up the lard, and then uh, Nathan ran it through the grinder, and then Nathan carried it over there and put it in that kettle, and we started boiling it to make cracklings. And then we used that sieve to strain the cracklings out of that lard, and this is just pure lard. There's probably three five-gallon buckets of that lard here, and that's what Holly and different ones of the ladies will use this lard to make bread and all kinds of baked goodies that, that that homemade lard there's nothing that makes better bread than that so it's uh it's very valuable and treasure for them I, I i estimate there's three buckets of lard in here they prefer to use this all all of this this lard uh wish that uh that they would like for us to be able to make enough lard that they wouldn't have to buy any lard i'm not sure how store-bought lard is processed but they say in bread making, it's no comparison to this lard. It just makes much better tasting breads with our homemade lard versus the store-bought lard. But they have what they have, and otherwise they have to use the other lard. But right now, it's just out here. Uh, the reason we have it out here open, it, nice cool air, just uh, letting some of that air, some, some of the heat escape from this. And uh, later on by this evening, it will be cool enough that we can pour it in some, uh, some buckets that yep. they have prepared for it, cleaned and ready to go. Turn completely white and be turn, become completely, like with a ladle, you have to scoop it out. It, it's like firm lard. So the other thing is, it's sitting here, so there's, there's fine bits of, of uh, from, the from the grinding is just real fine cuttings, I guess you might say, in this lard while it was cooking. And by letting this sit here like that, all those fine particles settle to the bottom. So we will start by gently dipping it off the top and then uh, when the kettle gets, when this um, pot here gets almost empty, we will actually tilt it up and let all that settling goes to, go to one corner and just take off the top. And there's going to be some uh, fi real fine, it's basically lard cracklings kind of grit, which when I was young, Mom and Dad didn't have a lot of money, and Dad didn't either growing up, and they would take that crackling lard mixture and mix it half, half and half with peanut butter and use it as a bread spread on their bread because they simply couldn't afford 
to buy enough peanut butter to feed everybody and this was a way to get the peanut butter taste and supplement everything so a lot of uh, a lot a, a lot of lard consumed I don't know uh, my dad died too young he was 76 maybe he would have lived longer if he would have uh, not eaten all that stuff but I sort of doubt it I don't think it hurt him any don't I don't know I mean doctors will tell you not to eat that and a lot of people are firm believers on it and how unhealthy is it but I think you know if you have an active lifestyle and farm and work the way we do that our bodies can we can consume we can we can absorb those lardy foods you know because uh, after all it's lack of exercise I think is what gets so many people that makes them unhealthy doctors so quickly tell us you know Quit eating that lard, it's so unhealthy, this and that and the other. Well, if you're just sitting on the couch or you're sitting in an office, I would say that's probably true. But, you know, if you wor work hard like we do here on the farm, uh, I don't think it's hurting us. Oh, my goodness, what are you doing now, son? Cooking, son. There's Brian. Brian bringing us, get, uh, cooking some food for lunch, I guess. Right? I reckon. Uh, this, this is really just samples. Oh, just samples? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's go down in the basement and we're going to uh, see where they're at with the sausage and uh, figure out how many pounds we have of that. And we're going to look at the recipe and get the salt and pepper and the seasonings the way we're going to season that and mix it all together. And then we'll get started uh, stuffing the sausage. More than two buckets? One. Yeah, it's looking like it might be. So I'm going to say it's a fair hundred pounds? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's at least that. At least 100 pounds? So. Okay. I might be deceived here, though. We call it link sausage. And the reason we call it link sausage is like the intestines that, I was, that we were cleaning there yesterday. Um, after after that we stuff it and it's smoked it will be cut into pieces and put into freezer bags when I was growing up when I was young mom would put it in jars and pressure cook it pressure cook it can it you know meat you have to pressure cook it to to preserve it if you're not going to freeze it nowadays we all have freezers uh, much easier and probably safer uh, less likely to get food poisoning like we're worried about food poisoning but uh, it's just a lot easier today to put it in freezers. That's the way we all do it. And that's the reason we call it link sausages. Because two buckets in that. Is that 100? Right. Pretty, pretty close. Right. Yes. So, so this recipe is for 10 pounds. So um, you want to go? Yeah, times okay, 10 if you could put that together for me. Okay. All right. You have to buy some tongs to grill with. I forgot the front one. Just give me 12 for you. You need the receipt? No. Thank you. All right. There you go. Okay, and so you need this times times 10? Yeah. Okay. Okay, two tablespoons of salt, so there'll be 20. Oh man, how many? Um, can I write it on here? Yeah, you can write. Well, no, I actually don't need to. Okay, so 20 tablespoons of salt, how much would that be? Sea salt. Sea salt, if you don't care. Sea salt, okay. Probably, two, I don't know if one pound will do. Probably two pounds. And then black pepper. Okay, here's black pepper. I need 10 tablespoons. I need a big one. And fennel. That would be one, two, three. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay. <laughs> fennel, where are you? This is. I may have to go to the back to find fennel. I don't see fennel here. I think I know we have it. I just don't see it here. Okay, paprika. Now there's two kinds of paprika: regular paprika and smoked. But you probably want regular, right? Just the regular because we're going to smoke it, you know. Okay. 
paprika. So it's 20. Oh, I think we need two of those. And red pepper, would that that'd be cayenne pepper? Yes. Okay. That's over here. Oh, let's see. Ground red pepper. Oh, yeah, that's cayenne. Okay, so it takes 10 tablespoons. Oh, I think two of those, too. And I better put this on the counter and get it up here. Just put it right there in that pan. Okay. Um, you have to write it down. So yes, you yep, you gotta write it down. You think that much salt, like, it calls for 20 tablespoons, so I don't know how much one. Mm -hmm. one we'll we'll try that. We'll try that and see if that's enough. Yeah, look, we're, it's going to take both of those, okay. I think. Okay, so we got the, I need to go check on the fennel here. Fennel I need, pepper, okay, garlic powder and brown sugar, I'll get, I'll get those first before I go get the fennel. Can you weigh that brown sugar out into that pan right there? Or do you have that already pre-bagged? It's pre-bagged, I believe. Let me double check. So okay. I need 10 pounds of that. So let me go see if we have that. Do you like the dark or the... Yeah, the dark light? is fine. Dark. The dark no. isn't as dark as the light. They must be. Whatever. I'll pick the cheaper one for you. Okay. Okay, so three, six. Uh, this would be nine pounds. Would that yep, that's probably close be enough? enough. Yep, okay. that's close enough. And garlic powder. I need ten tablespoons of that. Let's see. Do you want whole fennel? That's, or do you use ground fennel? I think ground. Okay, let me see what we have. I think I did that one time, and, and then then you, then you had those chunks in there, and that wasn't. That doesn't go right. good. Okay, so let me see if she has ground fennel. So what was the main when she first opened? What was the main stuff she was selling? The food that she's baking or something, or? Well, she uh, she always, ever since I was little, she always sold bread and um, maybe some rolls. Uh, a little bit of stuff like some some baked stuff that she made in the house and back in those days you didn't have to have an inspection and she just made this stuff in her house and uh, visitors would come through the community and they would she had a sign out here by the road and they would stop and they just come right in her kitchen right where we lived and buy her bread that's how she started she always did that but the store came about when uh, uh, up here at the top of the hill turned right where we were on Hobbiger Loop the other day one of the Hobbiger families had a small store there named the Variety Store. And when church trouble started and they moved away, that store closed. And that's when mom decided that she wanted to have a store. And Doreen thinks that that was in 1992. I'm going to say it was in those early 90s. Yeah. Approximately 19, yeah. And, and the original store where she started it, because as I talked earlier this morning, a, down there where we were working this was called the side house it was the building beside the house where just everything was stored and packed in here and it was not ready for a store so this she started the store in another building a quarter of a mile up the hill here and uh, of course that being a quarter of a mile away from the house that was that made it a lot more difficult and then uh, she had some people working for her and that came here and remodeled this and and made this into a store, maybe late nineties. Um, no, I think she was. I think she was only up there about a year or two. That, that's she right. Didn't stay up there long. She yeah, she did not stay up there very long. Yeah, she wanted it moved home here. But she was. Uh, uh, she, she was a bit of a business person. She really liked that. She uh, she knew how to do business like that, and uh, she done well with the little store here. So. Since she didn't use a telephone, how did she find products and order products? How did that come about? Well, you know, back in those back in those days, these suppliers they were also uh, uh, they had catalogs, and you know they would mail out catalogs with goods that they were selling, and then they had an order form in there, and she would fill these order forms out and mail it off, and then the orders would come. That's the way things were done back in the old days. But you know, the telephone then definitely did simplify things. I'll just write this down here while yep. you're getting. Right. And then you can stroke it off afterwards if you don't need it, if you don't bring something back. Yep. Okay, so that, but you know what? On the fennel, 
we have no ground pound. Okay, so what I, what you could do, if somebody had a grinder, yeah. they, a coffee grinder, they could grind this up for what you need. To, I know, we're, we're, so we're, we're ready to use it right now, so oh, have don't have time. And I know I tried that one other time. I Yeah, and then you'd eat that sausage and all of a sudden you bite into one of those whole things and that, yeah, that, that was too good. much flavor for yeah. one bite. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for. Oh, yeah, yep. Bringing in the seasonings for the link sausage. <laughs> okay, if you guys will put the table down now, please. Tim, if you'll take the twisty off of that and dump it on there. Eddie, you do the other one. And I'm going to hold back a little bit on that. I think we're overdoing the sugar just a little bit. What we need to do is pull that table away from the wall so we can get all the way around it. Okay. Get serious about it. Okay, that's good, that's good. So the recipe calls for 10 pounds, 2 tablespoons of salt, so that would be 20 tablespoons. We holding off on that sugar? Uh, we might put half of it in there. Okay, so the deal is um, it calls for 3 fourths pound of brown sugar for 10 pounds. And so how many pounds were in each of those bags? 3 pounds. 3 pounds, so we've already put 6. So 3 fourths... Um, three fourths pound per every ten, and we've got ten batches. That would be seven and a half pounds, right? So we're at six, so maybe about half of that. That's good enough. And there's one, two, three, four. Count out loud. Is it? What's well, right on it, huh? Just put all that in there and put us a little bit more. There we go. All right. Now put ten of these. Ten tablespoons of black pepper. Is this the same exact recipe you've all been using from the beginning? Pretty much, pretty much, yes. Now, now, Dad, Mom and Dad never had it written down. It was a mental thing for them. But I decided when Dad was still living that this mental thing can be so easily lost. And so we wrote it down and made hard copies for it that we keep at home. And then when butchering day comes, we get a copy out get the hard copy out and make a copy of it and bring it over here so you know if it gets wet. That's 10 of them? Yeah. Okay. Next we're going to put um, ten tablespoons of paprika in it. That was paprika, yes, paprika. Because we also got cayenne pepper here and the cayenne pepper. Okay, next we are going to put in um, this right here, the uh, cayenne pepper. Um, we're going to put in five, five, five tablespoons of the red pepper. Yep, it calls, the recipe calls for one half tablespoon for every 10 pounds. One, two, 
Somebody stop the file, Tim. What did you uh, ask me who, what the next number was? Absolutely. Thank you. Five. Five. That's garlic powder. You say you did a little more of the cayenne, Mark? Yes, just a little bit. That's what we did last time. It turned out real good. Okay. You close enough? Need just a little more? Another scoop ain't gonna hurt. Okay. They need to sell them up here at the store, but they do. What's that? Red Bull? They do? I talked to them six months ago. They started carrying them. Are you serious? Okay. The ingredients are all in. Have at it. Oh, this is my least favorite part. Yeah, right. You mix until your arms are about to fall off, and then you mix a little more. That's when you know you're done. <laughs> so you see there, now now they're going to put their hands in it and knead it all together. Our mix it hands. together. Clean hands, yep. Been working with meat all morning. They're clean. They better be. No booger picking or anything like that. <laughs> I'm going to check on the bone cooking over here. No sneezing either. Aren't you? Stir that a little bit. Oh, what's the smell? Yeah. So we're finally at the uh, uh, the stuffing stage of it. Been working on deboning this meat and grinding it and uh, mixing the seasoning in it, and now we're putting it in the stuffer. And Nathan and Tim got the stuffer ready over here on this other table. This is an old hand crank machine. This machine actually belongs to me. I was at an auction. If you want to come around here, uh, John, and they'll they'll work right there. Uh, actually, if you'll stand in the corner, so because Nathan has to stand on this end. I was actually at an auction, and they had this thing came up and was uh, going to be auctioned off, and people started bidding on it, and there was another man that was interested in it that I knew and he knew me but he chased me up to four hundred fifty dollars for this thing which I thought was you know quite high but at that that day Let's these, just a these machines are so rare Keep it going. that uh, Ooh, right that uh, I felt like that I needed it and uh, dad had a uh, dad has had a couple of them I think there's the one around here on the shelf but they, uh, they, they can have issues, there's gears can break and things like that. And So anyway, I bought this thing for $450 in auction about three or four years ago. Yeah, and uh, a it's bit. a fantastic, uh, give me just a fantastic stuffer. So what Nathan is doing is he's uh, stroking on the uh, intestines that we cleaned yesterday. These are the, the, the small intestines that we cleaned from that hog yesterday. And he had uh, Tim push out just a little bit of sausage on the end. It makes that end a little bit slippery for the intestines to feed on there a little easier. And so I'm going to come right over here. And Nathan knows that the intestines are very fragile. There's very, very thin skin. You want the intestines to be nice and full, but you can easily overfill them. And he's going to make mistakes here. <laughs> oh, yeah. he, he is going to bust them. It, it always happens. Go ahead and speed it up there just a little. And he's, he's just feeding that off. And you can see how these intestines just naturally sort of curl up, just like they were in the hog's belly. Yeah, rock and roll. And so he's told Tim to speed up just a little bit, and we're off to cranking, and I'm turning it along a little bit here. I think there are some modern-day stuffers on the market now. Nathan, do you know some electric? Powered. Well, a lot of these uh, grinders, that homeowner version grinders, they come with a stuffer attachment. Okay. Just... Okay. He's just going to cut it off there, and I'm going to take this out of his way. And I've already went to the smokehouse and brought this stick out of the smokehouse. And something Dad would have done is just go to the woods and get a small sapling tree and okay. cut a cut a piece of it long enough that goes from one side of the smokehouse to the other and then just hang this meat on there just like that 
and I'm going to equalize this out a little bit here so it'll hang on there three times. And then when this stick gets full, somebody will help me, one on each end of that stick, and we'll carry it to the smokehouse and be ready to put the smoke to, which we will finish. We will finish all the stuffing before we build a smoldering fire, hickory smoke fire in the smokehouse and start smoking this meat. So it's always amazing to me. All right, that's it. Okay, that's the end of his section right there. But like I started start saying, it's amazing to me. Yesterday started cleaning those intestines there. And that you can put the same hogs meat back in those intestines for the casing. So all the seasoning is in that meat and all they need is hang in the smokehouse and hook a, smoke them for about two to four hours with a good hickory smoke and delicious. Like some of the meat we were eating here just a little bit ago. And then you, then you cook them on a pan, fry them in a pan? You can fry them in a pan, you can bake them in the oven. The fast way is cut you a section of it, but like that much what you're going to eat for lunch and put it in a microwave for uh, 90 seconds and it's ready to eat. Yeah. Real fast lunch, good snack. So if, so if we buy, uh, buy sausage in the store, uh, are they cased in the intestines the same way? Store-bought sausage, or is that different? Uh, it's, it's possible that they can, they can be. I know that there is also a synthetic casing that you can buy and not clean the intestines like this. But I guess these synthetic casings are, are um, you know, digestible that you can, that you can eat them. But... I'm not sure like what, what hot dogs are encased in, but they have to be cased in something. Oh, Pretty neat, isn't it? Pretty neat, yeah. So as soon as, as, soon as they get all this cased, you then you go to the smokehouse. Then we we'll go to the smokehouse. Well, we'll go to the smokehouse as soon as this stick is full. And, and as you can see over there, they're filling that tub again. Uh, and so one, one tub full there did this amount. And so I'd say we'll probably have four times, five times that much, probably. So you throw it hard to pack it in there? It gets the air out of it. Yes. The air. He, he, he intentionally smacks it in there like that to try to keep the air bubbles out. Because if you don't, the air bubbles will come on in and meet. And it's a little bit difficult to get them out. Not that it hurts, but you might be cheating somebody's lunch to try to feed him a pocket of air instead of meat, you know. <laughs> Okay, so we are about ready to carry this stick out to the smokehouse and put another stick out in here to reload it. Yes, I'd like for both of you to carry this. I can, but you know, uh, I would rather you guys carry it. So we're going over here to the smokehouse with this link sausage. This little block building, this building dad built probably, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago probably. It's always been his smokehouse here on the yard. So all it is is just an open building. And it's got a couple of bars in here, so come on in, Tim. You see that ledge right up there? Your end goes up over that. And I'm gonna scoot this back like this. And Go ahead. Yep, okay, is it back far enough? Okay, now let's move this back this way. There. Are you good, Tim? Yeah. It's on there enough? Yep. Okay, very good. All right, now if you all want to keep on stuff, and I'll be right behind you with another stick. So these are the, the little sapling sticks here that Dad made. To, and and uh, like you see where we hung the sausage on here. And uh, when we get all the sausage in here, Holly just asked me, well, have you got the fire built yet? And I said, no, I'm not going to build a fire or make smoke until we have all the meat in here. Because once uh, the smoke starts, you can't breathe in here. You can't live in here. So get all the meat in here and then we'll get the smoke started. So we're going to go back down here to the basement with another stick and load it with some more sausage.
in that kettle there's a head the meat is pretty well falling off of it we're gonna go we're gonna get that out of this now and pick the meat off of the bones and start the process of making liverwurst right right there is one of my favorite pieces the roof the roof of a hog's mouth and only put cornmeal in it it's like corn mud yeah both very delicious and again the only meat about it, there is no meat in it, it's just the water is flavored with the meat. Well, we got back about 11 feet. And I wasn't that much faster, I barely made it for that. And the fish, and the fish that they caught, they had to count on that, starvation would have started today. Well, we caught one walleye, it's probably a... Between five? Oh yeah. It's, it's, you could eat that, couldn't you? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Nope, it's good. It's good what it is. There's not much here. Actually, I'm going to take this piece out. The rest is going to be okay for a little while. And in about an hour, we'll put just a little bit more wood on it. See, it's already, it's already taking a, a little darkness. Yeah, a lot of work. 